Hey guys, Mr. Backwork here. This is part two of lesson 4.8. Just one objective, we are going to use trig to model and solve some real world problems. So first thing we're looking at is some trig and bearings. And bearings are used in navigation and surveying and really it's how they give directions for like ships when they're out sailing. And what bearings do is they measure the acute angle that the path that you're on makes with a fixed north and south line. So here's what I mean. We've got this fixed north and south line running down the middle of our picture, and we're focusing on this blue line. That's like the path we're on. We're looking at the angle that's made between our path and the nearest vertical piece. So it would be this south portion down here. So we would call this south 35 degrees east, because that means that this angle in here, it's 35 degrees east of being straight south. So checking out this next one. This is a top angle that we're looking at, so we could call that a north direction. The angle that's created in here is an 80 degree angle, and it's heading to the left, so that means west, so we would read this north 80 degrees west. For this one on the right hand side, again this one is going to be a north angle since we're heading up, and the angle that's made between the north and our path is a 45 degree angle, and since this one is heading off to the right, that is an east direction. So north 45 degrees east. So in this example we're going to be tracking the movement of a ship and eventually what we're going to do is we're going to find its bearings. Uh, so we're told that a ship leaves port at noon. It's going to head due west at 20 knots or 20 nautical miles per hour. At 2 p.m. our ship changes directions and it starts heading north 54 degrees west, which is what's shown in our picture. And what we're going to do is we're going to find the ship's bearing and distance from the port at the time of 3 p.m. So before I even get started, I want to do some labeling on this picture here. We know that we left at noon and we're going 20 knots. At 2 p.m. we changed. So we traveled along this AB line for two hours at 20 nautical miles per hour. So in that two hours, we've covered a total distance of 40 nautical miles. So we made this turn at 2 o'clock, and we're trying to figure out where our ship is at 3 o'clock. So we've gone one more hour's worth of distance, which, again, if we're going 20 nautical miles per hour, this is going to be 20 nautical miles. Now I've added a couple of extra lines to our picture because all of our trig stuff that we're doing is based on right triangles. So what I want to do is I want to take this whole picture and make it into a right triangle that we can go through and solve. What we're going to look at first is finding some of the missing sides of this triangle. And I'm going to focus on this B value on the far left hand side first because we've got a lot of the information we need to do that one. Taking a look at how this triangle is set up, um, we've got a right angle in here and we know that this top piece is 54 degrees. So if we're looking at this small angle inside of here, it's got to be a 36 degree angle. We know that we've got this 90 down in the left hand corner and we've got this 20. So if we use this 36 degree angle, B is the opposite side, 20 is the hypotenuse. So I think we could go with the sine of our 36 degree angle equals our missing B side over the hypotenuse of 20. Uh, then to get B all by itself, we would multiply this 20 over to the left hand side. And then from there, we can just punch it into our calculator. Since this is a degree angle, we should make sure that our calculator is in degree mode. And when we type that in, we should get a B value of about 11.76. Next thing we're going to look at finding is this D value. So then we would have two sides of our right triangle. I'm again going to focus on this 36 degree angle. D is adjacent and 20 is the hypotenuse. So I'm going to go cosine of 36 this time equals D over 20. And again, multiply that 20 over to the left hand side to get our D value all by itself. Punching this into the calculator, we should get a D value of about 16.18. Now I'm going to label some pieces on our triangle. We had a B value of 11.76. Our D value was 16.18. And if we add that onto our 40, we've got 56.18 as this total AC length. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do a little Pythagorean theorem to find our missing C value. So I would go 11.76 squared plus 56.18 squared equals C squared. Going through and solving this, we should end up with a C value of about 57.40. 
So the C value up here, 57.40, and it says we're gonna use our B side and our C side to help us find the measure of angle A. Well, B is opposite and C is the hypotenuse, so we'd have to go with the sine of angle A equals that 11.76 over our 57.40. We wanna figure out what our angle A is, so in order to get rid of that sine stuff on there, we would have to do an inverse sine, and whatever we do to the left side, we also have to do to the right side. And again, we'll be typing this into our calculator. So the measure of angle A should end up being about 11.82. So I'm gonna plug this into the angle up here, 11.82. Now we're not quite done because we haven't found the ship's bearing yet. So what we need to do is we need to think about this vertical north and south line running through where we started at point A. We know that this small angle in here is 11.82, but we're worried about the angle that's created from our path to this north line up here. Well, if this is 11.82, then our missing angle in here has gotta be 78.18. So if we're looking at writing out this bearing, this is a north angle since it's up, and it's 78.18 degrees west since we're heading left. Next type of problem we're looking at are called harmonic motion problems. So what we're doing is we're tracking the motion of a ball or a particle on a spring that's bouncing up and down. And we can describe these by using sine or cosine graphs and functions. So we've got a point moving on a coordinate line and we're gonna call that simple harmonic motion if its distance d from the origin at a time t is given by either a sine or a cosine equation like what's written down here. So a sine of omega t or a cosine of omega t. Okay. A is going to represent some real number. Omega is also going to represent some real number. And that omega value has to be bigger than zero. Now when we're looking at this motion, it's got an amplitude, which again will be the absolute value of that a value. To find our period, well, omega is acting as our b value this time, so we would take 2 pi divided by omega. And to figure out the frequency, we're going to take omega and divide it by 2 pi. Here's an example problem, and there's an illustration to go along with this so we can kind of see what's happening. We're going to write out the equation for the simple harmonic motion of the ball that's on the end of this spring. We're told that the period is 4 seconds, so what we're going to do is we're going to go through and figure out the equation, and then we're going to figure out the frequency of this harmonic motion. So kind of modeling what's going on here is our ball is starting at this equilibrium point. It kind of gets stretched down to its maximum negative displacement, so as far down as it could go, and then it bounces back up to its maximum positive displacement, which would be like as high as it can go. So we can see that the highest value there is 10 centimeters, the lowest value is negative 10 centimeters. So the first thing we need to figure out is, is this going to be a sine or a cosine equation? And the big thing comes from starting at that equilibrium point. So what that means is at a time of zero, we had a displacement of zero. And the only place that's going to happen for us is if we use a sine equation. So we're going to start to build this equation. We're going to look for that a value, our omega value, all that stuff. So the amplitude, how high it goes and how low it goes, well, if we look at how that picture was set up, our amplitude was 10. So we know the absolute value of our a value should be 10. Now we have to decide, is this a positive 10 or is this a negative 10 that's going to go out in front? And what we need to look at is our graph went down first. So normally a sign would go up first if we had a positive A value, but since this one went down first, we have a negative A value. So I'm gonna throw a negative 10 out in front of this sign. So I'm gonna start building this, and our A value that we've got out in front is a negative 10. We said this is gonna be a sign. Now we're gonna go through and figure out our omega value. Now we said earlier the period is two pi divided by omega and we were told that we've got a period of four seconds. So I'm gonna take four equals two pi divided by omega, and I'm gonna make this four into a fraction so that I can do a little bit of cross multiplying. Two pi times one is two pi, and four times omega is four omega. And then in order to get this omega value all by itself, we have to divide by the four, and two pi divided by four is the same thing as pi over two. So that's gonna be our omega value that we plug in here, pi over two. And we're gonna leave that t value in here because that's gonna represent like our x. 
Last thing we're going to look at is our frequency. So we're going to take that omega value that we just found, which was pi over 2, and we're going to divide that by 2 pi. Now, instead of dividing by 2 pi, I'm going to turn it into a multiplication problem. And we multiply by the reciprocal, so that would be 1 over 2 pi. So now if we look at this thing, those pi's are going to end up canceling out. And across the top, we end up with just 1. On bottom, 2 times 2 is 4. So we've got a 1 fourth frequency. Last example we're looking at from this video is a similar type of problem. This time we're given the equation, we want to figure out a bunch of things based on it. So we've got d equals 6 cosine of 3 pi over 4 t. First thing we're going to look for is that maximum displacement. So we're going to be focusing on our a value, which in this case we have a 6. And the maximum value, the highest this would go, we would just do the absolute value of that a. So the absolute value of our 6. That's just 6. That's how high this is going to go. For our frequency, this is where we took that omega divided by 2 pi. So in this case, our omega value is 3 pi over 4. We're going to divide that by 2 pi. Now again, I'm going to turn this into a multiplication problem just to make it easier to look at. So I've got 3 pi over 4, and I'm going to multiply by 1 over 2 pi. Again, those pi's are going to cancel out. 3 times 1 is 3, and 4 times 2 is 8. So we've got a 3 eighths frequency. Next thing we're looking at is finding a d value at a time of 4. So I'm just going to plug 4 in for t. So we've got d equals 6 cosine of 3 pi over 4 times 4. Now when we look at this multiplication, those 4's are going to cancel out. So we've got 6 cosine of 3 pi. Now the cosine of 3 pi, well 3 pi doesn't show up on our unit circle, but 3 pi is the same thing as pi, and the cosine at 3 pi is negative 1. And if we take negative 1 times our 6 out in front, we should get negative 6. Last thing we're looking at doing is finding the least positive value of t, for which we have a d value of 0. So we're going to plug in 0 for our d value, and we're going to go through and solve for that t value. So working on getting t all by itself, I'm going to work outside in. First thing we need to get rid of is this 6 out in front, so we're going to divide everything by 6. Left hand side we've still got 0 equals the cosine of 3 pi over 4 t. Now in order to get rid of the cosine on this, we'll have to do an inverse cosine. And whatever we do to the right side, we also have to do to the left side. Right hand side, those cosines cancel out. Left hand side, the inverse cosine of 0 we get the angle pi over 2 equals our 3 pi over 4 t. Now on the right hand side I see this divided by 4 so I'm going to multiply by 4 to get those to cancel out so we'll do that on the left hand side. We end up with 2 pi equals 3 pi times t. I'm going to divide by this pi to get those things to cancel out. So we end up with 2 equals 3 t and last step I'm going to divide by 3 so we end up with a t value of 2 thirds. That's going to be it for this video. Please remember to fill out the Google form linked in the description down below. And thanks for watching.